As Porsche was starting to build SUVs, a lot of guys were asking, oh, what? What's happening? Nowadays, they are selling more SUVs than sports cars. Now, they are also building estates or combis, as we say in Germany. And today, we're going to take a deeper look at it here with the Porsche Panamera 4S Sport Turismo. Because Sport Turismo now stands for this estate form. And we're going to find out, does that work for Porsche? in exterior, interior and the sporty driving experience. Everything of that in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with me, with Thomas. And everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! A special shout out here today, by the way, to our Canadian fans of Autogefühl, because here today we are on Vancouver Island and we're going to take a look at this sapphire blue Panamera. Yes, this is exactly the color we at Autogefühl call Thomas Blue, because this one is my favorite blue tone. And Porsche calls it sapphire. Obviously, they didn't want to pay the license fees for Thomas Blue, I think. <laughs> so. Headlights here in the LED spec, you can see, and yes, they are not flickering on camera. Sometimes LED lights flicker on camera. Audi has changed their LED lights that they do not flicker on camera. Porsche obviously now also paid attention to this. What I wanted here with the all new generation of the Panamera, those two design lines on the hood, they seem to be a little bit misplaced at the very first sighting, but at the moment, I think it grows on me, especially in this color combination then. 5 meters and 5 or 16 foot 6 is the length of the Panamera and it does not matter if it's a normal sedan or here the Sport Turismo estate style. The base model is about 90,000 euros in Germany taking this reference prices but of course it can go way up. 21 inch rims for example here in this spider style and this is super 90 style so it's exactly my style so I love that kind of alloys. <laughs> Hear your opinion of that in the comments. Then everything is very cleanly designed. Here also with the strong shoulders. Not too much playing around with the design, very elegant for sure. And then the big difference, you pay about 3000 euros extra to get the estate. And usually it would drop down like this. It has been changed in a new generation that it looks a little bit more elegant. And now I really wanna hear your take because here the estate form is lengthened by this kind of spoiler and you have the additional adaptive spoiler right there. And this inlet wing, the small one, can be retracted up and down. Looks pretty spectacular always. And what is the case here that it's not too much of a difference if you have the Sport Turismo or the normal sedan because this piece here makes rather the biggest difference and you know the rest of the, of the vehicle has still this downside shape. However, I think this Sport Turismo style, it suits the vehicle very much. That's my personal opinion. I want to hear your opinion about that in the comments. And of course, as the normal sedan is rather, let's say a fastback and not a normal like sedan like, like this, also the difference is not too huge. So yeah, they're building an estate for the very first time, but it's not a revolution if you compare it to the normal Panamera. There is no real base model of the Sport Turismo, so it always has all-way drive. Here the 4S, however, is you know, one model up, already with a little bit more power. 
zoom more to the engines. What is very interesting is a style we also see, for example, with the new 911 facelift, that we always have this visual connection here, also with the lights from left to right. This is really interesting, and especially when you light up the vehicle. Other than that, you know, it's a little bit more upright here than the sedan, but again, not too much of a difference. And I think they also managed to have this very elegant. And also important if you look down below, those ones are real four exhaust pipes. No fake at all, as we so often see in the industries nowadays. Now let's take a look at the chassis, which is a mix of steel and aluminum. 45% is aluminum. Everything you see on the outside is basically aluminum. Then on the inside is more steel to get the stiffness a little bit better. It's always interesting to see those cutaway models here. And what did they also do? It also has half the welding points than a Porsche Macan, for example. So they tr try to reduce the, the weld points to save more weight and to give more stability, for example. And it's really amazing that what you can see here is at some point then a really finished car. At the first sight here, would you I mean you say this one here is the Sport Turismo? Well, you can see that this straight roof here, almost straight roof, the sedan would then fall down further. And here you can see my point earlier, when you don't have this wing, it seems a little bit more similar than the sedan. But this one here, as you can see it here, this is then the estate version. And always great to see those cutaway models here. So, under the hood, very nice that we have the blue frame here, fitting to the exterior color. This one here is the 4S diesel, V8 diesel, 4 liter with 422 horsepower. Then, in general, you got a V6 petrol engine, 330 horsepower, or with 440 in the 4S with the petrols, or petrol plus electric, the hybrid 462 horsepower with the V6 or the V8 turbo with 550 horsepower, then about 3.6 seconds to 100, or the new Turbo S hybrid 680 system horsepower then 3.4 seconds, but here it's not available for the Sport Turismo. This one here rather with the normal engines.
the key right here is a little bit different than with the 911, it's flatter. Then we can get a soft close like here. Ah, magic. An option, of course, it's a luxury option. Then a very solid, heavy door. Inside of the door, here we got a carbon fiber trim. You can pick different ones. This one here then goes in a very sporty direction. And the same as for the exterior, everything seems to be really wrapped tight. This is the you know, design scheme of Porsche. Memory seats were also available here. And with the Sport Turismo, we take a look here in the interior today about the versatility. And well, here you can fit some bottles, but it's not too big as for the space. We'll explore more. 4S entry cap in carbon fiber and then the interior of course sporty as we know from Porsche the steering wheel also inspired by racing cars with those gaps right there for example nice grab handle then also carbon fiber right there and here no contrast stitches but not just normal black stitches here we got a dark design, but you can get different colors. Sadly, there is no alternative to animal skin surfaces yet. We have to wait for the GTS version, obviously, to get Alcantara. Those ones are also the seats with a little bit more side support. You can see it on the side and on the upper parts. And wow, how many electric controls are available there. And let's get inside. And yeah, it is still a sports car because when we seen you got very low. However, it's of course more comfortable than in a 911. That's also the reason why people go for this Porsche. Well, the SUVs, you sit rather upright. That's the major difference. You have a lot of room. I'm wondering if it's 86 or 6 foot 1. There is the panoramic roof inbuilt, but I still have a lot of headroom left. As I said, the seats here, they can be controlled in so many ways. Side bolts and stuff, for example, also the steering wheel electronically in every direction right there and so you have well good overview to the front but to the sides you know the windows are rather slim so that limits the view just a little bit and you know there are no more cases right here somewhere to put stuff that's rather in the middle console because as I said here with the Sport Turismo also will have some family focus here now on the interior cockpit overview here again horizontal forms right there also here with the chrome carbon fiber again and this widescreen format the new one zoom more deals to that this one is also equipped with the sport chrono package then we have the analog clock we also have some gaps here in the steering wheel to hold your thumb stool for example shifting pedals then the driving modes will be selected here i we'll soon talk more about that but we can also see the changes here and interesting that in the display also the um, exhaust is highlighted and even in the visualization because we have the air suspension equipped here the option or automatically comes with the higher trim molds the car goes lower in the sports mode and you can see that in the visualization there it's very very nicely done then the lower part here uh, usually with this Porsche we have so many buttons here but it has all been removed so the most stuff you control with the screen now you can criticize it because for example the climate control uh, you mainly have to do right there for example for where the vents uh, should coming out with the air just like the temperature minus plus and the vent strength you can still control with those manual metal nerd knobs right here and the automatic shifting lever right there so the instruments, the middle one is still analog, the rest is digital. You can see it right here when I turn it on. And the good thing is you can very flexibly use it. For example, here on the right side, it can have the GPS view. The left side, you can, for example, have ACC information. Here you can switch it around again between the GeForce meter gauges, for example, and the GPS view. So you're very flexible due to this new setup. Now more details to the infotainment. And for example, here the vents. Here, when I turn on the middle ones, you can see that the lower part here also opens. Nice showing off effect. Other than that, you have the home screen. Uh, that's not my music, by the way. <laughs> Where you can set it customized. You can have certain elements there as you wish to have it. The chassis can also be here yeah, controlled manual, for example, to different modes, but you can also do it low in a lower console. The GPS is really huge in this widescreen mode also has good 
responsive times. You can also control it like a smartphone right there. Phone, you can either connect via Bluetooth, that is possible, like over this phone menu, or also with the cable then for the smartphone mirroring functions, so both is possible. And here's for example where you can also manually put out the spoiler with this nice visualization. So you have a lot of stuff, but you have to get used to the system. App view, when you have an internet connection, that is all available. Or if you want to change the assistant system, activate or deactivate some of those. We have all of those mounted in here today that you can see everything. The only thing I'm not so profound of, you see the resolution of the rear view camera, I think considering the price of the car could be better. This middle console here, again the favorite temperature, metal knurling is great quality for sure. Then here for example with those um, buttons which are not real buttons but still give you a haptical feedback. You can control the suspension here, also the seat heating and talking of versatility again. Here for example you shouldn't mount the smokers package then you have some more small space in there maybe you know four coins or whatever cup holders they are adaptive so they fit different model sizes and i'm not sure maybe to clean for example you can also put it to an even surface and then put them down right there again and what about this huge middle armrest right there really big then there's for example space to put your key one usb charger and a 12 volt power supply charger but i think there should be more than one usb charger in the front shouldn't there and we got a shallow glove box right there not too much you could fit there i really like the frameless mirror but you know it's very small and then this part this top part here is to control the roof the panoramic roof there are two those ones here are for the shades so uh, here the shade for the rear and the, and the front one and this one here to open it then ultimately. So the roof shades right there, there's the front one and the back one. Wow, what an orchestra. <laughs> and then the rear one stays like this and the front one can be opened. So that is possible. There you can, well, with a nice effect on camera, right? So a little bit step further now. Well, that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. And then, well, you don't have a rear convertible, but you have a lot of light in the interior then. So what about the rear compartment? It's of course important for families. And well, you do have enough space here as an adult. That's for sure, even with the panoramic roof. The estate form gives you more headroom, even though there's the glass roof. So plenty of headroom. That is the main advantage of the Sport Turismo version. Knee room wise, well, it does fit here. I still have some space in front of my knees, but I mean, the package overall is really bad considering that we have some cars in the small car segment where we have the equal amount of knee room. That's maybe also the reason why there is the executive version for the sedan with the longer wheelbase when it, that's, that one is, for example, used for chauffeur purposes. In general, the seating position is a little bit leaning backwards. So you also have the feeling that you really sit in a sports car here. Also because the rear seats are also in this sports car style. Then you have an armrest right there with cup holders. You can also fold it down as a ski hatch with a nice cloth cover on the rear and you can reach through there and also you can switch those seats completely that is very important you see that the front seat right there need to be a little bit more in the forward we'll soon do that then you can also have this one third one third and well last third <laughs> ski hatch split and make this one here also one of the most versatile Porsches yet also optionally you can have the rear seat temperature control system and you can also close the upper shade from here. That is possible too. The question is how often will you really need it? And on the opposite side, ta-da, three more USB ports, but you have to go for them optionally. A couple of hundred euros extra just for some more USB ports. I mean, come on. And what is also very interesting with the Sport Turismo that you theoretically have a fifth 
seat here in the middle, you see there is a seat belt and also, well, <laughs> the possibility to put it hmm, with this middle tunnel. Um, challenge accepted, I would say. So it's of course hmm, not that comfortable to sit here. Well, headroom wise, it does work, although I think I'm sitting in the panoramic roof already. Then there's the big middle tunnel. I don't have any massive room for my legs. And let's see. Um, no, that's not the right one. This is the right one here. Well, um, yeah. So that works. I mean, for short distances, at least you have the possibility then. Now what's really important with the Sport Turismo, first of all, electric tailgate. This wide opening you basically also have with the sedan, but here of course even more freedom to move things in and out. Good quality here with the cover. Below that we just have the you know, tire pressure kit. And then this one here moves up and down automatically. However, you can also remove it like this manually. And then put it right in there. And you also have a better overview what this car is really capable of in the capacity. 12 volt power supply right there. And then you can easily remove it here with a nice system like this. It's pretty heavy, but then you have a free look right there. And let's flip the seats now. And then probably one of the longest loading areas of a Porsche ever, right there. This is the right side. Let's <laughs> speed around the left side behind our camera. And here we go. So there it is. What do you think? Wow, that's really long. And yeah, I mean, go skiing with it wouldn't be a problem when you put them out there, secure them, of course, some way. Really flat loading area right there. Wow, that's really impressive and I think also again one of the main differences then again to the sedan. So, and just to get a feeling for the size, if I put the standard airport, small airport trolley in here, that you know, get a practical feeling of how long actually the trunk is. I think that's always very helpful. You see, you can do a lot of things then with the room available. And now the driving part and we have different driving modes available and we want to start sporty in a very sporty way. So we go to the sport mode with the V8 diesel here and go for a ride up the hill with some nice corners. Also, if you have a full screen, look at the all-wheel drive distribution. Just one quarter in the front now when I'm driving uphill and being on the gas and rest rear wheel dominant. The air suspension got a little bit stiffer now in the sport mode. The steering wheel very direct but a very natural feeling. You have to steer a little bit more than with other very progressive steering characteristics. But you do not feel that you drive a 5 meter or 16 foot 6 long car. So it really feels more agile. The turning circle, yeah, I mean, you do feel that. However, it is okay because you can see here you also have a um, rear axle steering available. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> so it is basically okay for such a long vehicle. Now let's go back down and the brakes will work. Even with the 21 inch rims, which well, I recommend a little bit smaller ones, but they work because the air suspension is still giving us so much comfort. Look how agile this car is to ride, although it's so heavy. Just here, you know, when the weight is playing a role, then you feel being pushed in the corners. In the Sport Plasmo, by the way, here gears are turned up even higher. That is maybe a little bit too extreme if you're not on the racetrack. You also hear it. So rather sport mode would be, I think, the suitable pick. Maybe a sport plasma if you uh, want to have, uh, you know, 
spontaneous acceleration maneuver or something like that. But then if we go to the normal road, we can also go in the drive mode, take a deep breath and the thing is it can immediately transform into a very comfortable cruising vehicle. Let's also check the car settings here, chassis to normal again, normal driving mode. The spoiler will only go up at very high speeds. You can also have the GPS mounted in here in my right side screen additionally to get some more information not to move my head down too much or sideways to the other infotainment system. So stop sign. <laughs> And then the acceleration can play a big part. It's so effortless here. The diesel, you do feel a difference with the petrol engine a little bit over the sound. The sound for the petrol engine is a little bit better. It feels a little bit more easy to drive, you know, a little bit more seamless. Let's take it that way. But power wise, this one here has so much power then you do not feel a difference and um, if you didn't know before actually that it would be a diesel then the question is really would so many people really realize it and I doubt it so they really tune it to a way that uh, um, that the differences are really minor than from from diesel and the petrol engines sound installation wise also at the moment 80 kilometers an hour and funny thing here by the way I mean, you know that if you're Canadian, but um, you might um, yeah, want to have that, that announcement gone away. This is, by the way, also a good test if you want to, to kill the GPS announcement while driving. Sometimes you just have to turn it down from the sound. But here, obviously, that didn't really work. Let's see. Oh, I can do that. I mean, that's you know that's what I mean also by the um, sound setting here. So volume, navigation announcements. There it is. Strange. And why does the music now start 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 again? I don't know. So I have to mute it again. There we go. So and then we can get rid of it. But again. No, I think that infotainment system could have been a little bit easier. So, there was no real traffic here, but definitely very distracting to do something while, do, while doing that. Now, 60 kilometers an hour maximum speed. Again, in Canada, we have kilometers an hour. They uh, switched, I think, about 30 years ago, something like that, or 40 years ago. And, you know, from outside, you might think, ah, oh, you know, they have also miles like in the US, but no, they, they don't. They also have the the metric system here and we're also <laughs> driving of course at the right side so cruising vehicle very comfortable due to this air suspension you can also live with the base model with a normal standard suspension that's for sure but the air suspension of course gives you even more comfort and also more flexibility as you can tune it to, to this extent that you know when you drive normally you have the maximum comfort also when the road is a little bit uneven here now. And then if you go to the sport mode, you can tune it a little bit stiffer. Here, for example, sport mode, gears are turned up higher, shifting down earlier. And then when you feel some feedback from the road here, you get a little bit more feedback, a little bit stiffer. Normal mode, you don't really tilt. so. The usual setup is already sporty. Then in the Sport Plus, the car also shows me in the instruments, moves down a little bit more. You don't feel it too much, you don't see it really, it's just a little bit. But then you feel that the suspension in the like, even got harder and then wow, that is a super direct feedback here now. And then suddenly this luxury estate, we have to say it this time, not sedan, it's luxury estate turns into a sports vehicle and is even capable for going on the racetrack. Check out our Turbo S hybrid review for the Panamera performance on the racetrack for that. This one here more focused on the everyday driving and here 
can enjoy the countryside roads on Vancouver Island. I always love those double yellow middle lines like, uh, like they're also in the US. I'm not sure, it just look good, looks good here on the road, especially now in the contrast to our sapphire blue car. Overview, well to the rear. It doesn't make too much of a difference if you have the Sport Turismo or the Sedan. I think here you can see it a little bit better. To the sides, it is somewhat limited because the windows are not that high. Mm, but overall, overall, you get a good feeling for the car and you also have the, the assistance systems. Speaking of them, you can set the distance, the ACC on the left side here. There's a special column where you can set the ACC. Um, at the moment, I wouldn't really need it necessarily. But of course, it's, you know, especially handy on the highways to have it. Here at the moment, I'm not pushing any throttle anymore. Just let the ACC system do its job. I can just press it further, just one, two, three kilometers enhancement. And in a normal driving mode, you can see also predominantly rear-wheel drive. That's always with the all-wheel drive system. Also, when you have the hybrid, the hybrid also supports both axles if you have one. And then it's not really 100% rear wheel drive. You see, there's just a little bit front wheel, just a little notch, but it will remain with the rear wheel bias characteristics. And if you super hammer it and have some, um, you know, spin on the on the rear axle, it can maximum go 50/50 because this is um, a clutch in the middle of the of the drive shaft and it's physically not possible. Well, you sometimes read in those texts that are published, yeah, there can also be 100% to one wheel. What's happening there? So, let's say maximum power, 50% is put to the front axles, but at the same time, the rear wheel is being reduced in torque due to the electronic stability system. That means there's no drive over the rear wheels, but then 100% of the overall drive available for the front wheels. But it's not really 100% from the existing power. Did you get the difference? I hope so, then probably put it in the comments. <laughs> A little bit complicated, but still interesting. So, yes, this car is more enjoyable on countryside roads than other competitors because it always comes with the sporty fun, even in the base models. Then it is somewhat large, you have to bear that in mind. So a smaller car would be just by, you know, by weight, by physics, more fun. It doesn't matter so much which very version of the Panamera you have. And also, this is you know, one of the key aspects of our test today. If I would be riding a Sport Turismo now or a sedan, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, I couldn't tell. There's just a little difference there in, in, in the rear and no one could seriously say, yeah, I, I do know which I'm riding if I'm going for the sedan or a Sport Turismo. So driving-wise, it doesn't make any difference. And I think it's definitely good to know. For sure, you can really enjoy the countryside roads and I hope you'll also enjoy our view there to the front camera massive woods here, some nice fjord-like lakes, so I really like the landscape. It's uh, re reminding me a little bit of Norway, and if you take a look, a look at the world map, it's also no wonder, you know, where it's actually placed. And I think here also the Panamera can really play all of its, you know, all of its good characteristics to be a very calm, and good cruiser because I mean you do have abundance of power with that one but it's not really meant to use the power in a sports car way if you're just on a normal driving road um, you know that would be also more fun with 911 it's more good to know that you have the power and that you for example can good have some good acceleration on the motorway we do not have a German motorway here today Again, for higher speed assessment, you can check out the turbo 
as high review than on the racetracks. This one here more focusing than on the Porsche Panamera as a family car and I mean it does work still for adults in the rear although you could have used some more legroom in general packaging, packaging advice but I think this is really one of the Porsche you couldn't say you know, if you have a lot of money it does suit as a family vehicle space-wise and also uh, comfort-wise for everyone. So here again some more slalom tests. This is the normal driving mode. I would be interested if you can really see the difference on the camera mode. I mean you don't feel the g-forces which we do feel here. Then here is Sport Plus mode. Do you see also the difference in the slalom I'm doing by the way? I would be really interested in that if you can see that on camera. And by the way, acceleration-wise in Sport Plus mode, if you really hammer it, there's no one behind us now, just like 250, like hammer it through and then it's like... Bam, and that's also almost 70, like blop, instantly, instantaneously. So, um, and the interesting thing is due to the all-wheel drive and the air suspension evening it out, everything, it doesn't stress the passengers that much. It's still a relatively harmonic acceleration, what you do feel by that. And one thing I didn't want to forget, I always complained about in Porsche cars, you know, so many things driving-wise are really perfect and great and stuff, blah, blah, blah. But then the turning indicators were really rubbish. Because when you put them in, it's was like... <coughs> And then it works and then it makes it sound like But here they've used a new turning indicator now I'm Not confusing anyone behind us now. So you just tip it, you know for like three clicks or you can also put it in and that's pretty much normal now Well, I would rather use maybe the clicking. This is the best thing here if you click it in It's still a little bit hard to click that in works a little bit smoother also with other cheaper vehicles but they still reworked this uh, whole column and I think it improved for the best still there has you know some I'm not sure what what they what they do with the turning indicator in general it's one of the weak points still but definitely way improved to the one we we see before that just those small things but again this is a base model 90,000 euros here and then if you go for the Sport Turismo and 4S diesel and so much extra equipment here and you can easily add 30, 40,000 euros to that base price then you can also expect some minor details to be perfect if you pay so much money then for sure. It's also nice by the way that in the front display I can see the maximum speed limit that is being applied at the moment on the very left side. That's also helping me to maintain the right speed limit for example. So I hope you enjoyed this call but I mean we start the sporty <laughs> right through the landscape here and check out our other Panamera reviews too before we get to our final conclusion for this day for the Sport Turismo. And now our conclusion for today's Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo here in the 4S trim. Does a Porsche estate work? Yes, it does. I think it very well fits the vehicle. It makes it more versatile. It makes more sense without being anything of a compromise. So I think, yes, it is definitely a good step. If you share this opinion, support me on that in the comments. Exterior wise, definitely a very elegant vehicle. One of the most beautiful estates for sure. And the interior very well processed what is missing again that we have more alternatives to animal skin surfaces obviously this one will be left on for the gts here so far but they are working on that internally i have been told driving wise hardly any vehicle in this segment matches this one because you have a good combination of luxury and comfort especially here with the air suspension really hard to beat the infotainment system if you see it the very first time, you are overwhelmed. But nowadays, when I have this vehicle now for like third or fourth time in different version, I got along with it. But I think you still have to manage that you don't overwhelm the customer at very first sight. 
and what I said earlier from the interior very well usable especially trunk wise however the rear passenger should have more leg room considering the length of the vehicle this is our insight for today here if you want to see more power you can join us also for the turbo s hybrid episode we will link that one in the video description hope you enjoyed it for today and also tune in next time or to our other panamera reviews check them out if you're interested in this very vehicle thank you for watching